if you think about like rack your brain on ways to make money, I mean, that's if you are capable of printing money, like that's the ticket. And I didn't just have this recipe off rip. They progressively got better and I put a stack of like 10 pieces of paper and print 10 copies of the background color. And then when that was done, I'd put it in another printer. And at the same time, I'd put another stack of 10 in the first printer and print 10 more of the background color, you know, just move them through this cycle. I could print like $5,000 in a few hours. I wanted something that every, any test you give it, anything you look for, like it, I've got it. And I got that. What's up everybody. My guest today is Jeff Turner, that money counterfeiting genius who you've seen all over the internet. We got him in here today to tell his story. If you don't know, Jeff is from Tampa, but he made his bones in Knoxville, Tennessee. He was a drug addict and to fund his habit, he started printing money, but he's excellent at it. He grew that into a multi-million dollar operation. He teaches us exactly how he counterfeited $100 bills. He even managed to make the new ones that have the blue strip on it. I had no idea about this process. It is fascinating. He caught a Fed charge, but he got out. He's cleaned himself up and he even taught the Fed's his method for making money. That's how good he was. If you want bonus content, head over to patreon.com slash the connect show. Without further ado, I give you Jeff Turner right here on the connect with Johnny Mitchell. I'm just sitting there printing, you know what I mean? And I hear a knock on the door. So I go look through the peephole and it's just like black, like somebody's thumb was over it or something. And I like look through the little window and I see Cleveland Secret Service, Knoxville Secret Service, Organized Crime Unit, Drug Task Force, Knox County Sheriff's. At that point, I was just like, yeah, it's jig is up. That's when I see lights behind me start to flash. And I didn't even think, I just hit it. I was driving like my life depended on it. Then I parked the car, hopped out, closed the door, and I started running. And he pulls out a burner, a shank, it's like six inches. And then he passes it to me. And he goes, here, that's yours. Don't ever leave the cell block without this. He was the reason I made it out of that place alive. Based off of the background of your crimes and yeah. you have a, a hand, a knack for oh, yeah, yeah. design. Yeah, yeah. What's your background? Um, well, I basically are we recording right now? Well, yeah, we just uh, go. Okay, sorry. Are you are you my um, age? I'm uh, 38, 37. I'm 37. Okay, and you're from the Tampa area. Yeah, I was born uh, like just outside of Miami in Sunrise, Florida, mm -hmm. and moved to Clearwater when I was like three. So basically, I mean, as far as I remember, I grew up in Clearwater. Um, right. And uh, I started. I got into the sign business, like as a sign installer. And that's kind of what got me into, uh, you know, the, the start of like graphic design work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I started like installing um, and then started kind of manufacturing and printing on vinyl and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, were you a young entrepreneur? Did you get into like drug dealing as, a, as like a youth or were you into like legitimate entrepreneurship? No, I was <laughs> into the drugs and drug uh -huh. drug dealing for since I was like 16. Right. I started, you know, the same old story for most yeah. people started selling weed at like 16 mm -hmm. yeah. um started selling coke at like 17 18 yeah what a um, shock that a white guy from tampa that yeah. looks like pitbull would get into <laughs> drug dealing as a teenager um but yeah and also like tampa at the time i was growing up is when like oxys was were, were yeah. just everywhere That's right the early 2000s um, yeah so like you know, pain clinics would literally like, you'd be 19 years old, perfectly healthy. And you could leave with 240 <laughs> Roxy's yeah. and like 120 Xanax bars. Yeah. And you know, that was the re-up. Yeah. It's crazy. People were coming from, you know, all over the country to go to South Florida, you know, yeah. I mean? just pill mills. Yeah. Turning them out. And yeah. You can probably use insurance too, to go get your, probably leave with 2,500 pills for, you know, a copay. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, like, a lot of the pharmacies though didn't want insurance like they just wanted cash because obviously mm -hmm. you know cash is always better they, for they don't want any paper pay taxes trail. or whatever yeah. whatever it may be but yeah florida is the epicenter of all of the frauds and the scamming mm -hmm. the insurance scamming the yeah. rehab centers i mean it's just a wash in white collar crime absolutely <laughs> it absolutely. is it's like the new york with financial crimes Florida is the place of scams, insurance fraud. Yeah, the, it was big. I don't know if it still is. They probably cracked down on it, but uh, like tax return fraud, you know, people would like 
falsely file tax sure. returns for like crackheads with mm-hmm. 10 kids yeah. and get like 20 <laughs> yep. grand. Mm-hmm. That was really big, yeah. maybe five, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. But as you grew up in Tampa, you're selling drugs. <laughs> yeah. Are um, you using drugs besides, yeah. you know, smoking? Yeah. Um, I started out, you know, just smoking weed, selling weed, but mm-hmm. then I did, I got on pills, you know what I mean? Cause mm-hmm. back then like pills were, everyone did, did oxys when they first came out, like everybody. Yeah. So, um, that was like a middle class thing. Like, like the way everything like, upper class, lower class, yeah. middle class. Cause they were just back then Roxy's I could get for like $5 a piece, even on the street, let alone, you know what Retail. I mean? Retail. You're yeah, getting for like five people a piece. were selling them for like two for $12, yeah. like two pills for, you know, it's now crazy. they're going for like 30, 40 bucks or whatever. Yeah. Um, was there a hustle? Could like you buy them for $2 a piece in Florida and take them out of town and get a markup absolutely. for it? Absolutely. A lot of people did that. I never like traveled state to state. Mm. Um, but like my thing was I would sponsor people like so people because basically you'd need like $250 for an MRI and then your first visit was like $250 and then the script would cost 150 So basically like people who wanted the pills or whatever, but didn't have the six, 700 bucks. It's like, well, I'll pay, I'll give you six, $700. Just give me half the script and you take half the script. So it's really win, win. You right. Know what I mean? Cause yeah. you're, you're getting 120 pills for like 500 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and you only need the MRI the first visit. So after right. that, it's like $400 for 120 pills. Right. You know what I mean? So like, and then they sell them on the street for six, seven, eight dollars. Right. Know? So you're giving out like business loans almost. Basically. They call it sponsoring. Yeah. Like that's kind of the, yeah, the term well, that we all use. That's basically. how that's how widespread it was. You guys actually have a term for that. Oh yeah. Dude, oxys were in Tampa at the mm-hmm. time, dude. It was yeah. crazy. And like there was uh in originally the the pain management clinics could dispense too. So you'd literally just go there with 500 bucks and leave with pills. Like you'd see a doctor like, hey, my back hurts. And then they give them to you. And then they passed a law that you couldn't dispense at the same place you were writing uh-huh. them. Cause they thought it was like too much like drug dealing, which yeah. it, you know it was, but sure. So then like all these pain management clinics would like build a wall and get <laughs> separate their addresses from A to B. Yeah. So like technically it was two, you know, yeah. addresses or whatever. And then yeah. they kind of cracked down on that. And then, you know, it's slowly, and then like the pill monitoring system hit where there was like the right. DEA numbers and right. databases and stuff. And that, at that point, prices skyrocketed mm-hmm. and, you know. But now it's too late. All those places are strung out on opioids well, yeah, to this I mean, day. obviously. Now it's fenced. And P, that's where the heroin mm-hmm. came in was pills got expensive and, yeah. you know, it's kind of progression of how it went down. Counterfeiting money is becoming harder and more rare in the U.S., it seems. That might be a different story in Europe. When I want to read more about a subject like money counterfeiting, it can be difficult to know if you can trust the news. That's where today's sponsor comes in. Ground News is an incredible website and app that pulls news from both local and international sources. The thing that really sets them apart is that they show you political leanings, reliability, and ownership of all of these media platforms. Check this out. When I looked up the boom of counterfeit money in Europe using my Vantage plan on Ground News, I instantly got multiple articles and news sources about the epidemic of fake euros exploding around Germany. Right here, it shows you how many sources are reporting on this and their publications' political leanings. As you can see, counterfeit money is a topic that tends to stay neutrally in the center as a covered topic. But just for fun, let's check out the coverage on U.S. inflation slowing down. You have many more left-leaning articles covering this topic. Interesting, considering the upcoming election. Take a look at this headline by rightleaningnews.com. January inflation exceeds expectation, failing hopes for interest rates cut. It's focusing more on the failure to meet expectations despite slowing down. Now, this one is from the far left. They decided to focus on the fact that there have been some decreases, leaving out the fact that it's not as low as expected. In today's world of endless information on the internet, fake news, and consolidation of media ownership, transparency is more important now than it's ever been. That's why Ground News is such an incredible tool. Seeing the full range of how issues are being reported on means I get to put critical thought into my opinions, making it harder for the corrupt and powerful to hide behind good press. So I think you should try it out too. Go to ground.news slash the connect. Again, that's ground.news slash T-H-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T. Subscribe through my link to get 30% off of their unlimited access vantage plan. 
I can't recommend ground news enough, especially if you're like me, you love reading about economy and culture and politics, and you have to be right on your opinions. Click the link in the description, get 30% off today. It helps out the show and it's going to help your worldview by getting the most balanced, informed news sources out there possible. Thank you very much. Did you get into any of that? Any H? Yeah. Later, later on. Um, that was kind of like, I'd say pretty much like, a, well, a contributing factor to why I started counterfeiting, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so like I got into the sign business and moved up to Knoxville. Um, and that's where I got into, you know, heroin. Mm -hmm. Um, why Knoxville? Um, I, I well, I kind of wanted to just leave Florida because mm -hmm. like the drugs, you know, I was trying to like get off drugs, like move mm -hmm. clean start type. Shit. Um, and like the last year I was in Tampa, like uh, I went to like 10 funerals and, you know, so, and it was just a lot of people were dying and going to prison and I mm -hmm. was on drugs, like wanted to get clean. So, um, ODing, uh, some of them, so a couple were murdered, uh, one killed himself. Mm. Just like, it just started getting crazy. It was like your crew. You know I mean, pretty much like a, a lot of them. Are these white <laughs> guys or did you roll with? Uh, mostly white guys. Mm. Um, I started mess, messing with a lot of black dudes in Knoxville, mm. but in Tampa, it was like kids I grew up with, you know what I mean? Like, mm. yeah. So yeah, I move up to Knoxville and I got clean for a little while. Um, got another job at a different sign company. Um, and I was just doing pills at that point. I ended up relapsing and get, you know, getting back into pills. Um, but then I, uh, wrecked a work truck. Like I was driving a install bucket truck and, uh, like wrecked it, lost my job. Um, so basically like at that point I was married, I got married. I had a couple kids, I had a newborn baby. Mm. Um, just so happens that like the lease, it, we were just like renting a house. The lease was up in like a couple months and then I lose my job. Um, and I was making decent money at the sign company, but I was, you know, living paycheck to paycheck mm. pretty much had a little bit saved, but not, um, enough. So like when I had a newborn baby at home, the lease is almost up. You know what I mean? Like just lost my job. Mm. That's when I kind of was scrambling to like think of ways to make money. I, I thought about just getting back into drug dealing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause I, I met a few people in Knoxville that were like big drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Um, which is funny actually that a guy I worked with at the sign company ended up being like a really large drug dealer. And I didn't even know it. Like I just worked with this guy. And he, he said, he's like, oh, I got, got some Coke or whatever. And I was yeah. like, right on, you know, I just got weed. I was like, I figured he was just like a small time. Right. Like he's working at a sign company, you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. But he ended up getting fired. And then like a few months later is when I got fired. So we linked back up and I went over to his house and like, it just so happened he had like, like kilos of heroin and meth and Coke. And, you know, so I was like, holy <laughs> bro like <laughs> he just had a passion for sign making I mean, <laughs> he didn't do it for the money well i think after he got fired he like met the plug and mm -hmm. then in those three four months like you know but uh yeah there's big time drug dealers in tennessee because yeah. it's a it's a corridor and prices are really high exactly so and that, that's the thing is in especially knoxville for some reason like a lot of these drug dealers from detroit especially like they're known in knoxville like the detroit boys mm -hmm. it's like um, you know, like thousands of people from Detroit have access to all this heroin up in Detroit, but like, it's so much more expensive in Knoxville and like, there's no competition. Right. Really. So like yeah. all these dudes from Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Atlanta, they go to Knoxville to just sell dope. It's crazy. Like they'll go up there for a year. Most of them end up getting indicted getting or, popped, or right. you know, having warrants and going back to mm -hmm. Detroit, whatever. But mm -hmm. I started dealing with a lot of, a lot of those guys. Cause like, those people come to Knoxville to sell dope, but they don't really know people to sell it to. You know what I mean? Um, so they just like go up to random people at gas stations, you know, like you, you party or whatever, Man. trying to find customers yeah. or whatever. So like, you know, as a counterfeiter, that, that was great. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause strangers would be like, Oh, I got, you yeah. know, so I just buy it with fake money. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, did you get into selling heroin before that? Like when you're hard mm -hmm. up, you, you know, money's getting tight. I mean, a little the bit, baby. but I didn't know, like I moved up to Knoxville, married with kids with a job. So like I knew some big drug dealers, but like, I didn't know all like the junkies running around mm -hmm. Knoxville. So like, I, I didn't really have the customer base mm -hmm. to do it. Like some people I'd middleman some 
make a little money or whatever. But um, yeah, I didn't really didn't have the the customer base, and I wasn't gonna go up to random people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah. I got kids at home. I'm not trying to get arrested on some yeah. dumb. But um, but so basically, I started um, you know, counterfeiting again. Um, what did you say again? When was oh, the yeah. first time you tried it? Yeah, when I was 19 in Florida. I I did it for like six months. Interesting. Okay, um, so let's talk about that. What what gave you the idea? You know, obviously you have this graphic design ability, right? Which is a special, just innate gift. Like I don't have it. My producer has it, right? Yeah. He puts together this set and you're good with your hands. Yeah. So what, what gave you that idea? Obviously you were, I'm sure you were on pills, you know, it's yeah. another scam. I'm trying to scam a scammer. When, I, yeah, pills, when but- I was younger, like in Tampa and Clearwater and stuff, um, yeah, I was just a hustler. Like I mm. do, I did a lot of crazy, you yeah. know what I mean? As a drug addict, a mm. young drug addict, um, like, you know, at that age, like trying to be a gangster, wanted to be, you know, driving around with guns and robbing people and, mm. but printing money was just, you know, if you think about like rack your brain on ways to make money, I mean, that's, if you are capable of printing money, like that's the ticket. And, well, you know, you're an artist, yeah. you know, if you um, can print good money. Yeah. So what was the difference how successful were you when you did it at 19? Why did it only last for six Yeah, months? not very long. So like um, the bills at the time, I thought they were great and they were good enough to sell them and stuff. But, um, you know, I basically tinkered around with it for a while and ended up getting like a decent quality bill. And a friend of mine's dad is was like a connected guy in Tampa. Um, so like I through him, I told him what was up and he was like, I might know somebody that wants to buy some. It was through his dad, but his dad didn't want to meet me. I didn't really want to meet his dad. So it was all through him. Like I'd give him him and then he'd go and bring me back the money. Um, but then he ended up overdosing. So mm-hmm. it was like the person I was selling him to, like, I couldn't even get in contact with mm-hmm. anymore. So I basically, and at that point, like, you know, at 19, I was making money selling drugs too. So it was like, when that connection fell through, I just was like, whatever. You it's lost just, interest just, in it. You got yeah. money coming from drugs anyways. Yeah. Um, but now here you are as uh, an adult with a family. Yeah. Uh, take us through it. Um. So, yeah, like the lease was up in my house, lost my job. Um. I linked back up with the dude that I worked with and found out he was like a big drug dealer. Mm. So that that's when I like considered trying to sell drugs again, but like thinking about it. I really didn't know people to sell them to. Um, so that's kind of when I just like, I considered like robbing a bank or, you know I mean? I was in a desperate situation, like, um, you know, but obviously that's not the best choice. I didn't think at the time. So uh, I basically decided to start counterfeiting mm-hmm. again. And I told my buddy, like, cause I, you know, he's got weight. So I was like, if you want to re up, you know what I mean? You could throw some of these in there. Right. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So, we did that for a little bit. Um, so, but tell us how you made the bills. I know you've talked about it on a million podcasts, but yeah, uh, you know, for the lay person, this is uh, unbelievable. Okay, so it, it took. It, I didn't just have this recipe off rip. Like, right. basically, they progressively got better through like trial and error and experiences. Um, but like the main thing that I was doing was uh Bible paper, like the thin blank pages. Um, there's usually, usually like two pages in every Bible, mm. um, which is enough to make a hundred bucks. Cause I'm sandwiching two thin sheets together mm-hmm. so I can put a, a strip and a watermark embedded in between them. Um, so, but some Bibles have like in the back, it'll say like notes at the top where you can like take notes or whatever mm-hmm. study Bibles. Um, and there's like 20, 30, 40 blank pages in the back. So those type of Bibles are worth like five grand for one book, you know what I mean? So I'd basically take two sheets of this Bible paper. Um, and like in order to, to print it, it's so thin, it would jam up in the printer, but I'd just tape it centered on a regular piece of printer paper and then just send it through the printer. Um, and I'd print like a few different layers Mm. For like I'd print the background color first and then like all the black ink and then the treasury seal and serial numbers. Um, but how do you mimic what a hundred dollar bill looks like? Do you lay an actual hundred dollar bills sandwich between the 
the sheets of paper? Like, how do you, what do you mean? Like, how, how do you how do replicate I, what the, the it, drawing looks yeah, like on a hundred dollars graphic design stuff, right. basically. Um, so like, I'd have to, so like, I actually found a stock image on Wikipedia, <laughs> uh, surprisingly enough, it's like a super high resolution photo. Um, and like I'd, uh, take photos like high resolution, take a camera and cause like you can't just scan bills cause scanners will like recognize it mm. and, uh, like just posts up some penal code or whatever, some right. law that you can't do that. But if you take a, a photo of it and just upload a photo, there's, it doesn't go through any software to mm. recognize what it is. Right. So, you know, I, I took like the Wikipedia thing and took pieces of that image and then took photos of like just the green treasury seal, like super close high resolution. Yeah. So then I could just copy and paste it and just construct the, the digital files, you know what I mean? In separate layers. Cause if you're trying to color match, um, like basically if you adjust the color settings on a printer and you can get the background color, right. But then that will make the serial numbers off. So it's a weird process of like color matching each layer. Mm. So you have to print it in multiple layers. You know what I mean? How I, I don't really. So <laughs> I'm going to just like walk me through like I'm a four-year-old. How do you actually do the artwork? Like, are, are you, oh, I think I see what you're saying. Like a, I think um, we, a Adobe Photoshop right. or Illustrator. I used a program called paint.net. It's basically a generic uh, illustrator. Okay, so so and and then you're just with a mouse going yeah, yeah. through and looking at just kind of like matching what the the bill looks like, and you're literally just reconstructing it. Well, yeah, yeah I, like the Wikipedia file is just an image of a hundred the front of a hundred dollar bill right. on the back. So I'd have this basic template, yeah. you know, of what yeah. it was. Wow. But then I could say, take a photo of just the green treasury seal yeah. and then copy and paste it and put it on, onto the file and then, you know, space right. it and size it just right and cover the seal. But it, it's also, it has a lot to do with like, if you zoom in on a digital image, um, like when there's like black lines, it, if you zoom in really deep, you see pixels and it, it it's not black to white. Yeah. It's like black yeah. to dark gray, light gray. Yeah. It's fuzzy. You know what I mean? If you right. zoom in. So then you, you got to erase all that and make it just black lines. So it, when you do print it on a high resolution printer, it, you know, it looks real. How you know, long did good. this first trial run take you? Probably a couple months. Yeah. That, that was like, my lease was up in two months. So like, I kind of had like a deadline as far as like, I need to start making money, you know, within a couple months. Yeah. Um, and I'd say, right, luckily enough, right at about the time the lease was up, like I had, I had it to where they looked good. Now you're ready to start yeah. printing these. Yeah. So I was selling them to this drug dealer friend. Um, and then one day his house got raided because of his drug thing. Yeah. Um, they found counter, my counterfeit money at his house. Yeah. Um, he was charged with that as well as like wow. drugs, but he got arrested. And then like, you know, I, you know, I obviously was sketched out mm -hmm. thinking, you know, maybe, I don't know. It turns out maybe he didn't inform on me, you know, that I, nothing ever came from it, but I was sketched out and my lease was up. So at that point I was like, we're just getting a hotel and doing this money thing. Cause like, you got to travel around when you're breaking them yourself anyway, you know what right. I mean? So basically, yeah, I just started staying at hotels and printing, yeah. you know, probably two to 5,000 a day and then going and spending them and hundred dollar bills. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I, you said on Vlad that it, uh, it took you about 10 minutes to print one. Um, well, yeah, I'd say five or 10 minutes, but I never just printed one. Cause I'd, so like, if you average out the time, it probably took about five minutes or so, eight minutes or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'd have three printers and I'd put a stack of like 10 pieces of paper. I'd tape Bible paper centered on regular paper um, and take a stack of 10 of those and print 10 copies of the background mm -hmm. color. Yeah. And then when that was done, I'd put it in another printer. And at the same time, I'd put another stack of 10 in the first printer and print 10 more of the background color. And while the the black ink was printing on the other printer and then the you know just move them through this cycle of layers mm. um, yeah. so like basically i i could print like 
$5,000 in a few hours. You know what I mean? Was so, I mean, it kind of averages out mm-hmm. at about, but I do, you know, stacks at a time, like a thousand dollars at a time. Yeah. Cause if you put, I found if you put more than like 10 pieces of paper in, cause you've got Bible paper taped on it. Mm. If you put like a thick stack, it'll end up jamming up and, mm. you know, messing up. So like, usually I didn't print more than a thousand dollars, 10 bills in one click of the mouse. Yeah. You know what I mean, did you have anybody helping you? Um, well, I mean like my wife was, she was uh, running out to get the ink. I, n- not at first. At first she, you know, she knew what I was doing. Right. But after a while I started making so much that it was like, and we had like a nanny, um, that ended up finding out what I was doing and she'd help. So like I had them, like they were taping paper all night, you know, taking Bible mm-hmm. paper and centering mm-hmm. it and putting thin pieces of tape and doing that. Um, you know, cause you got to think $5,000 is 50 bills, right? But there's a front and a back. So that's a hundred pieces of paper, you, you know what I mean? Right. Got to tape. So normally we'd like sit and tape paper for an hour or two mm-hmm. um, at night. And then cutting the bills. Yeah. How, 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 when, when they're all, when the graphic design is ready, when you think you got the feel right, uh, how do you, how do you cut them down into the perfect rectangles? Um, so the whole process is kind of, if you want, I can just go through like the whole process, basically sure. like I'd tape the paper, I'd print, uh, you know, each layer to make a front of a bill and then do the same thing for the back. And then in order to print the watermark and the strip, I would have to print on the reverse side of the back. So this looks like a back of a bill, but I'd need the watermark and strip on the other side. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to like cut a hole through the printer paper to expose the back of the Bible paper, tape that, and then run it back through to print the strip and the watermark. And what do you use to make the strip? We're talking about it, the blue just, strip I, on the hundred dollar bill. Well, no, I was, this is when I was just doing the 96 series, the, the hundred dollar bill before that. Oh, the, the old hundred dollar. Yeah, I ended okay. up doing the blue note later. Okay. We'll um, get into that. So how, yeah, yeah. how were you making the 96 series strip? It was, I was just printing it. Got it. So like, if you look at it up a hundred dollar bill in the light, um, you know, it's like, it just says USA 100, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you actually cut it open, you can pull out a physical strip, but like I just printed it on and then, um, would take a invisible ink UV pen and just draw a line over it. Mm-hmm. So that way, if they put it in the black light, it would glow red, just like a real bill. If you held it up, you'd see USA 100, but there was nothing physically there. I just printed it on right. and, and used the marker to draw it on. Right. And um, those were easier because now the blue strips are a different material than yeah. the bill. Yeah. I, I was able to counterfeit the blue note, but like, this is what it's, it takes so long to do it mm. that it's not worth doing. I, I didn't think really? I, I didn't have, uh, I mean, I think if I, if I would have continued doing it, I yeah. mean, obviously it, you get faster. Yeah. Um, well, how, how many hours would it take to, to it, print it a took blue me note? about an 45 minutes to an hour to make $100 bill. Right. So, so it's like, but the 96 series spend the same. So it's like, yeah, I'm f- with this more as a hobby, like just right. as like a challenge yeah. to do it. Um, and thought maybe I could get faster at it and that would be like the future of what mm-hmm. I was going to do. But like at the time, 96 series, I mean, they still, you can, you know, spend them wherever. So what year is that? Uh, that you're, you're making the 96 series. It was like five years ago. Cause I, Cause I feel like even so. in 2018, it was rare to see the 96 series. Like, I feel like by then it was all the watermark, the blue watermark. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd say strip. if you go to, uh, a bank and pull out a thousand dollars, you, you'd probably have maybe one of the 96. I mean, they're around, uh-huh. but you got to think if, if I go into a dollar general and buy whatever, a Red Bull and a something and give them a 96 series hundred, they may, they may not see those all the time, but they see them, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, they don't know that I'm spending them at every store I go to. They're right. just like, Oh, unless, you know, right. Just oh. so happens. He's got one of these. Yeah. So you kind of like, get excited. Cause you're like, Oh, I haven't seen yeah. one of those for a while. Yeah. Like when you see an old $20 bill, you're like, Whoa. and you got to think like 18 year old cashiers, they may, like I said, see them once a day, once a week yeah. or whatever, but they don't, you know what I mean? They don't, know exactly yeah. what they're supposed to look like necessarily you know yeah. and they're all on roxy's you know they're dirty <laughs> yeah, they don't much. care you know they're corrupt 
Yeah. So like, uh, so you, so you're, you're figuring it out. You're printing. What is this around the clock operation or do you just work like a set amount during the week? Pretty much. I mean, I'd say it was around the clock for the most part, like, but there was, so I had to acquire the Bible paper, you know right. what I mean? And, you know, Bibles are like $50 a piece. Right. So I just like go into thrift stores and bookstores and like open a Bible and take right. the 10 blank pages and just rip them out. And <laughs> right. And just, you know, I, I, mean? I was going to guess you went around to every <laughs> motel room you could find. Oh, well, that, yeah, that was the other thing. I, I was living out of, you know, hotels. Right. Um, so normally there's a Bible in the nightstand yeah. and I, you know, I'd take two pages, it's hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I started to notice that they weren't in there at a lot a lot of motels and hotels mm. and stuff. So one day I asked, um, I saw like the maintenance man or somebody who worked there or whatever. And I asked him, I'm like, can I get a Bible, um, in my room? And he was like, yeah, I'll bring you one in a minute. So I was like, I'm like, why you guys don't keep Bibles in, in the hotel rooms anymore? Like what's going on? He's like, well, it's like it offends some people or whatever. So it's upon request, but I've got boxes of them in the maintenance closet. So I was like, I was like, I'll give you a hundred dollars right now for, for all these boxes of Bibles. And he was like, deal. So I, I you, you look like a man of the Lord. So oh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, would... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but I guess so he brought me all these Bibles and I just went through, took the blank pages and then gave them back. So he didn't even know what he did. He was confused. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why did he just pay me for these and give them back an hour man, later? Man, this guy loves God. He wants and a thousand course, Bibles. You know I mean? and, uh, <laughs> but you know, so at, staying out of hotels, I'd start to do that to right. a lot of places. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so that definitely increased production. Uh, sure. But as far as the around the clock thing, like I had to acquire this paper mm -hmm. and then tape paper at night to prep for the morning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'd normally wake up at like nine, print until like noon, one, two, whatever. Um, and then go spend them, you know yeah. what I mean? And you can only use like, well, at first I was only buying stuff for one bill and getting 80 bucks, getting going changed. to the next place. Right. Um, but I, you know, this is what I was saying. I learned as I went and got more productive and better mm -hmm. because like, then I would, uh, go buy a hundred dollar prepaid visa card, which has like a $3 fee added to mm -hmm. it. So it'd be like $103. So I'd give them two bills, get a hundred dollar prepaid visa card and $95 change. So it was like Brilliant. even better, even better. Um, but then I started getting money orders just like. And I'll just go buy a five hundred dollar money order, mm -hmm. and just then just go cash it. You right. know what I mean? So it was like started. You know that two thousand dollars. You know whatever. Like just got started making more money yeah. as as I went. I kind of learned from mistakes and like realized better ways to do things. How so, much a week were you printing? Um, I even on like a lazy day, I'd, I'd print two thousand a day mm -hmm. every day, no matter what. Yeah. Um, bond. Some days it would be like 5,000. The most I ever printed in a day was like 10,000. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'd say, you know, two to 5,000 a day. I mean, so let's that, say like 20, 35 grand a week. Let's say, week? yeah, say 30 grand a week that you're printing in counterfeit. What kind of profit can you make off that after spending them? Um, I mean, about 80, 80% 80 of it. Yeah. Because I'd usually go buy something for $10, 12 $15, yeah. you know, with tax, whatever. I'd usually get like anywhere from 80, 80 bucks change, $85 change maybe. But once I started doing the money order thing, it was 100%. You know what I mean? Because right. it was just, you go buy a money order and cash it. Yeah. Um, but I was also selling uh, bills to drug dealers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying, people would like, come up to you at gas stations in Knoxville all the time, like offering to sell you heroin. So I'd like, buy, I'd be like, yeah, let me get a gram. If it's good, I'll buy a ball, if, you know, whatever. Cause you're on heroin now. Right? Yeah. I snorted it. I never used yeah. needles or anything, right. but yeah, I was, uh, you know, doing heroin. It was so. like that Brown, the gray stuff or the Brown stuff. Mm, I mean, it was different. It was, there yeah. was at the time in Knoxville, it was like, well, there was a lot of just white. It's just fentanyl nowadays. Yeah. Um, some people, some people like, you know, pretend it's heroin or like, we'll cut it with something to make it look darker or whatever. Mm. But a lot of people just sell white powder and just, you know, whatever. What a sketchy place. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's probably, I mean, fentanyl from what I've heard is in every city now. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, yeah, it's, it came to Knoxville probably 10 years ago. Yeah. And, Knoxville uh, and Florida are on the cutting edge of the latest, uh, you know, 
crime and and drug and just misery <laughs> pretty much but um pretty much. okay so how, how did that work with drug dealers um so yeah i normally s- start out just buying you know two three hundred dollars worth from them mm-hmm. um but then how do you make money you resell it well that was just like i didn't really look for that that was like if somebody came up to me and offered me i'd just right. buy a couple grams for myself right. you know what i mean but then <clears throat> um you know, some of them found out that they were fake. Some, some, you know, never did. And I just stopped messing with them or whatever. Some found out and were pissed. Some found out and were just like, damn, like these look really good. Like you fooled me. And Mm -hmm. like, you know, they were able to go re up and spend them. So like they weren't, a lot of them weren't even mad yeah, because they weren't really out money. But when they found out they were fake, they were like just impressed and basically saw an opportunity and was like, you know, I want more of them. Like start yeah. selling them to me for 20 cents on the dollar now. Right. You know what I mean? Which you now know, when he goes to re up, say he's spending 30 grand on the re up, he only has to give the connect 20 grand in real yeah. money. And then, and that's, that's how the guy set me up actually, but I'll get into okay. that later. But, okay. um, so yeah. And, and some people didn't want to buy them, but would trade heroin for them. Mm-hmm. So it was like, instead of buying a gram for a hundred dollars, I'd give you two fake hundred dollar bills for a gram. Mm -hmm. And they knew they were fake and they just mix it in with their money and you know, whatever it's a come up a little bit of come up for them. Mm -hmm. So basically I got like, you know, free drugs essentially because they knew they knew they were fake. Mm -hmm. So they just, you know what I mean? So I just trade them to, for my own personal habits and stuff. Um, did but, the habit get worse as you got more money? Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably. Right, yeah, I'd right. say. Um, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't... It's never good to give a drug addict to, like, unlimited funds. Right. right. But... Dude, you're li- you're like the Fed. You could just print money <laughs> out of thin air. Yeah. Yeah, money doesn't... Uh, I mean, at least at the time. Like, it didn't mean a whole lot. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it was just, like, every day, you know, buy whatever you want. But like the thing was, people were always asked like, oh, buy like sports cars and houses. Mm -hmm. But like it was a a trinkle in. It was like a few grand a day. So like I never had stockpiles of like a half a million dollars. But like it was just living very comfortably. You know what I mean? Doing whatever you want. You know, going to different cities, stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, Did you did did you start expanding and going to, you know, getting nicer hotels and yeah, sometimes. And how did you manage your family? Did you all, were all they always with you or did you leave them in Knoxville and then shoot out of town both, to do your dirt? Both. Sometimes, like I said, we had a nanny. So sometimes they'd stay in Knoxville and I'd just mm. go to a city for a couple of days. Um, sometimes the kids would like go with us, but like mm. they didn't know what was going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, cause I just like, you know, maybe get two hotel rooms, print in one for a few hours. And then just, they thought I was at the store or something. I could just come back and then it's like, Hey, let's go shopping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause they were young. They didn't really, you know, I I think they probably suspected that that was shady was going on, but did you have to end up employing people to help you break the bills? Yeah. Um, so like I, I probably at the peak, I'd say there was, probably 10, 10 or 12 drug dealers that I was selling them to. And I'd say maybe like between like me, my wife, the nanny, and then I probably had four or five people that I'd go, you know, give them 500 bucks and just be like, bring me half, bring me back, Uh you know, two, $300 or whatever. And they just wanted, you know, like they were on drugs too. So they just want their, you know, money for the day or whatever. So like they just call me and be like, Hey, you know what I mean? you got anything? And I'd be like, yeah, come, you know, here's five bills, bring me back a couple hundred bucks. So like, I wouldn't say it was necessarily like employed, but it was just like, Mm -hmm. you know, if I happened to have an extra five or six bills and was sick of shopping or didn't want to like, cause like you, the thing is it it was a a full-time job because like, first of all, there's specific corporations that are best to go to, right? Because different uh, businesses like, uh, try to detect counterfeit currency in different ways. Right. Like, but like specifically like grocery stores, most grocery stores, dollar stores, they just mark them with a pen. You know what I mean? If, if the cashier does suspect something mm-hmm. or anything, maybe they'll hold it up and look for the strip or the watermark. Right. 
But like my but you bills, had that. yeah, they beat all that with yeah. flying colors. So, but like some stores have those bill validator machines, right? And it didn't work in those. So like, right. I would steer clear of certain corporations and specifically go to other ones. I tried not to hit like mom and pop stores just to f- over like, yeah, you know, somebody trying to make a living. Sure. Um, so did you? Was there trial and error in that? Like, did you ever go try to spend, you know, hundreds at? target and then get denied yeah well i i rarely got denied surprisingly because like but i learned from situations Mm -hmm. so like um one time i went to for instance uh i went to a cvs right walgreens just mark it with the pen but cvs have a pen with a black light attached to it okay so i went to a, a cvs one time and you know she marked it and marked good and then she shined a black light and this was before i used the uv pens this is why i ended up doing it uh, because she shined the black light and it didn't glow red so she was like huh that's weird and then she like held it up and like marked it again she's like well this must be good though and she took it anyway uh, so then i was like i gotta figure i gotta make close something call. to make this strip glow red you know what right I mean? so then i just I, I tried like breaking apart highlighters and soaking them in water to make it invisible to the eye, mm. but still glow. Um, but the highlighters didn't really work. I tried like neon colored pencils and lightly yeah. coloring uh-huh. it on the inside of the paper. Yeah. And that worked well, but it didn't look great because it was still like colored pencil. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, like I would never think to even know how to do that. Did, did anybody teach you? No, it was just, you know, reading and, I mean, if it glows, it's got to be ultraviolet, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you just look for neon stuff or yeah, yeah. This, UV stuff. Or. This is combining talents of both science and <laughs> art. Yeah, a little bit. A we little looked bit. it up before you came here. The government estimates that there's only $200 million in counterfeit bills in circulation. Now, there are probably billions of dollars, especially in the last four years. We printed 20% yeah. of the money in circulation has been printed in the last four years. That's 200 crazy. million is a drop in the bucket. So yeah. not a lot of people are doing this, especially not successfully. Yeah. I, I think, uh, so what I'm saying is you need to think about getting back to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. No, but this is really like, you know, I met one guy when I was down who was just like this, you know, but when, when you're, when you're locked up, you meet all sorts of people. Most of them are lying, but I met one guy, he was a drug addict, white boy, but he was describing in much the same way that you, your hustle, uh, is, was yeah. that, yeah, it's, it, you can become rich very, very quickly. Now, obviously it goes all to drugs, you know, usually, right? But I mean, like, you could have built, uh, you know, you could have become a millionaire very oh, yeah. quickly. I mean, it's printing money. It's it's the only limit is your imagination on how to integrate that and make that. You know, yeah. If I were not that I will, but if I were to redo that, you know, hypothetically, like obviously not being on drugs and like. You know, living out of hotels and traveling to do that was expensive. You're always spending it. Yeah. So yeah, it just, you know, it was basically like a paycheck to paycheck situation, yeah. but it was, you know, five grand a day right. and then you spend it every well, day. And then the next morning, you know, well, I, I mean, it eventually little bits, you know, I had a little stockpile. At, what was the, your end but, game? Cause you really just got into this cause you were about to get evicted. So did you have a thought like, okay, five years from now I'm going to get out well, there was some of the drug deals. So, like, when these drug dealers, all of them are the same, dude. Like, when they first found out the bills were fake, they were like, I want 200. Can you make me 200,000, 400, um, half a million? Yeah. I'll give you 50 grand, 60 grand, whatever for it. Um, You know, which, with the way I was doing it, like, each bill was handcrafted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it would take me months of just printing to make a half a million dollars in yeah. one go you know yeah. what i mean so like i was like nah like hit me up when you're going to re-up and i'll i'll sell you 10 grand you know what i mean but I, i'm not i can't you know yeah. sell you a half a million in next week yeah. like it's just not possible um so but there was some of the dudes that kept hounding me about these lump sums like mm-hmm. you know what i mean i want a half a million like mm-hmm. um so I, in my mind i was kind of thinking like 
eventually I'm just gonna stop spending on myself, you know what I mean? And just like, just do a couple big deals. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, just sell somebody half a million for a hundred thousand, do that right. a couple times and then just stop. Yeah. And you know, can't retire off a couple hundred grand, but like, that's a new start. You yeah. know what I mean? You, I can move to another city. Cause last time when I kind of fitted, when I was younger, I kind of did that. I made, you know, over the course of six months, probably 50 grand, which mm -hmm. wasn't a lot. But when you're 19, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, I made some money and then the dude died and I just was like, cut my losses, got away mm -hmm. with it, you know, yeah. whatever. So I was thinking that that is probably right. how it would turn out again. Uh, like I'll just, you know, maybe sell a couple big chunks, get, get a couple hundred grand, yeah. move to another city and just stop doing mm -hmm. it and, you know, sure. get, on, get on with life. Sure. But that didn't, you know, didn't end up happening. But. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, though. That's like a drug dealer saying, okay, no more hand-to-hand -hand sales. I'm just going to sell to yeah. two or three dudes a couple of times and then get out. Yeah. Did you know that you had to get off drugs? Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was like, I've always kind of wanted to, like, I moved up to Knoxville to get off drugs. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to forever. Like, I never really wanted to be on drugs. I mean, I guess some part of me did, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, with heroin, it's hard if you got kids like it you got sick for like 10 12 days and like you know what i mean like i had to support my kids and it was, it was just easier i guess to just yeah continue on with it. it's I mean, pretty it's, wild to think you can be a functioning heroin addict and there's a lot of them. there's more than you would yeah. you would think for sure but probably they're not shooting it like yeah well yeah i mean i wasn't shooting up and you yeah. know i'd snort snort a line in the mm -hmm. morning mm -hmm. go on about my day you wow. know what I mean? So that's your, your plan is to, to start dealing with these, these drug dealers more to start, you know, supplying them with counterfeit money. What were some of your biggest problems on the supply side? Like uh, you were talking on Vlad, I wrote this down, the crane paper, which is what they print oh bills off of what the government actually uses to, yeah. to print bills off of it. Well, that's a company called crane currency yeah, right. um, and they are the like basically the government just contracts out companies for yeah. like everything. So the money is, I mean, it's actually printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, but they buy the paper and the security threads and all that yeah. stuff from crane currency. Right. Um, did you end up sourcing paper? Did you ever end up moving on from Bible paper to something like more sophisticated? No, I mean, Bible paper is pretty perfect, dude. Wow. Surprisingly, because like, um, First of all, like the thickness of two sheets of Bible paper makes up the the thickness of a full, you know, bill. Right. So that was good. Um, and like if you shine a black light on regular paper, it's bleached when they manufacture it. So it glows like a bright fluorescent blue. Uh, money glows like a dull purple. And for whatever reason, Bible paper also glows a dull purple. So it was just like, it was perfect. It didn't mark with the pen. But I was spraying the bills with a matte lacquer spray um, to coat them so the pens wouldn't react. So that's like where the science comes in. Like yeah. if you're trying to counterfeit something, you've got to understand how it works, right? Like if you're trying to replicate something. Yeah. So like, you know, just reading, I learned that how the counterfeit detection pens work. It's a, an iodine-based ink and iodine reacts with starch. So when you hit a regular piece of paper, the iodine reacts with the starch and turns black. Money is printed on starch-free paper, so it stays right, yellow. Right. So then I was thinking, like, you know, trying to find starch-free paper, but, mm -hmm. like, it's like, you realize, like, I'm looking at this wrong. Why look for starch-free paper when I could just coat the bill with something so the reaction can't happen? Right. So then you're spraying it with the lacquer. But also the good thing is, is, like, when you spray a thick coat first, the pens won't react, so mm -hmm. they mark right. But then you let that dry and spray another coat from a distance yeah. and it kind of mists on and it gives it a texture. You wow. know what I mean? So it was like each little revelation I had usually solved two problems. Yeah. So it was just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the best. Those are the best revelations is when, you know. And you it, could look all this stuff up. Positive. You were looking at all this stuff up online. Yeah. I mean, I knew I've because I, when I was 19, I researched it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Back then, the internet wasn't as, you know, there wasn't as much information. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. I learned a lot more right. um, the second time around. But, like, I already knew the basics of a lot yeah. of this stuff. So, I knew what to search for um, and all that. And I actually figured out how to replicate the blue strip 
on the new Blue Note um, through Google Patents. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because I knew Crane Currency made uh, the paper, security features. Right. So I was just looking, I was thinking if it's a private company, like they have to patent this technology. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So I just went on Google Patents and right. typed in Crane Currency, you know, yeah, Crane and Company, right. and event just scrolling that's, through. That's I all found public information. Yeah, I mean, they got to patent it if they yeah. want the rights to the technology. Right. So I found the patent um, and just you know read through it, and it basically was saying like fly eye lenticular lens arrays, and which is like a a thin clear film. Um, that like it's got like microscopic little half spherical lenses, yeah. right? And when you print underneath that in dots, the different ways you look at the little sphere, it's like microscopic. You can't really see it, yeah. but like um, you know, the images change because it's a lens, so you're seeing this dot at this angle, but this dot at that angle. Yeah. So if you if you print a specific pattern underneath the lens film it makes it move. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how long did it take <laughs> you to perfect the, the new hundred? Um, well, I was, I was messing with that the whole time. Right. But did there to, ever um, become a point <clears throat> to where you were like, okay, I need to focus pretty much solely on these because the, the 96 hundreds are, are too old. Like, and it'll look too obvious if I'm just printing these and, and breaking them. I mean, that was the goal. Um, but like once I did kind of perfect the blue note, I did realize like it just takes too long. Yeah, it's, it's just not uh, an hour takes you like, an hour only gets you one bill. Exactly. So it's like and then you go break it. So you're making eighty dollars an hour, which to, to a normal to commit, person is like a well, good wage. But when you factor in the hotels and yeah. the gas and the yeah. drugs and, right. you know, driving from city to city just yeah. to break. Uh, it's like it just wasn't wasn't really worth it. So the government really did a good job with that. Like you think making that new hundred with the, with the blue strip is, has cut down on wholesale counterfeiting. Yeah. I think, I mean, people obviously still counterfeit the blue notes, but they're just uh, crossing their fingers and hoping the cashier is an idiot and mm -hmm. will take it with a piece of tape mm -hmm. over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that, that was my thing. Like I didn't, I wanted to make a bill that, like I felt confident going in. Like I'm not just hoping that you're an idiot cashier. Like mm -hmm. I wanted something that every, any test you give it, anything mm -hmm. you look for, like it, I've got it. So mm -hmm. then, and I got that. So it was like, I was, you know, I wasn't even nervous going into the yeah. stores. Like I got turned down a couple times, but even when they turned it down, it was mainly because I just went to that same store like multiple times mm -hmm. and eventually it would hit the bank and they'd find out and mm -hmm. form the store. And then the store's looking for them. Um, but even even looking for them, they couldn't prove it, right? Because it had it had everything. So like, you know, if they suspected it, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm looking for these fake '96 series bills. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this is a '96 series. I, mean, I don't trust it. I don't want to take mm -hmm. it. But they'll give it back. They'll just be like, yeah, I just don't want to accept that. And and, like, okay, and take it and leave. And you have plausible deniability, right? Like if you go in with a, a handful of bills to a business <laughs> or the bank, like you you may not know. Yeah. I mean, uh, an average citizen that truly doesn't know they have counterfeit money could be spending it around too. Well, that's the thing. Like if they did the couple of times they said like, oh, we've been getting a lot of the fake bills. You know, I don't feel comfortable accepting this. I'll be like, I'll just say to them like, well, I just cashed my check at this grocery store. Like that's what they gave me. Mm -hmm. Like if you think it's fake, like I got to go take it back to them and, yeah. and talk to them. So right. then they're like, yeah, you should and give uh -huh. it back. So now there's no evidence. Right. All you've got is a cashier being like, I thought a bill was fake. If the police yeah. come like, okay, you thought, but there's no evidence against it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause you, you, they always give them back. Yeah. And um, did you ever have a <laughs> situation where the cops got called? Mm -mm. I mean, not, there was a bolo out for like a be on the lookout, uh -huh. uh, like almost like a wanted poster for right. me, but they didn't know my name. It was just a picture of me at a register. Oh, really? Um, but I've never, I never encountered the police. Did you try to fan out from Knoxville? I know you were on the road and stuff, but did you try to like stay away from where you lived when it came to like breaking <laughs> no, the bills? No, that was probably my mistake. Uh -huh. Even though that's not even what got me hemmed up, but... Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I started just locally in Knoxville and the surrounding area, you uh -huh. know, surrounding cities. Um, but then, like, eventually going bookstore to bookstore to get the paper and hitting up the stores to break them, it's like 
you kind of spider webs out and you don't really want to go back to that area because there's no Bible paper there. Right. Because I'm taking the blank pages out. So I'll yeah. go in a bookstore, take all the blank pages, but those books are still on the shelf. They're yeah. not going to order more Bibles because right. the inventory is still there. So like once you right. go to a bookstore, you can get enough paper to make 50 grand maybe yeah. out of a bookstore. But once you go to that bookstore, yeah. there's no more paper there. Yeah. So like you- So you, you started know. running out of turf. <clears throat> yeah, pr pretty much. I'd go down to like Atlanta- um, like Atlanta and all the little surrounding, like there's a dollar general. I'd Google where dollar generals, Walmarts, yeah. you know, grocery stores, yeah. the corporations I like to go to. And I just hit, hit up every exit that has those stores <laughs> on the way down to Atlanta and then spend like, you know, five days in Atlanta, just hitting up everything there. And how much Bible paper would you come back with? <laughs> Well, I'd normally go to Atlanta, get the Bible paper, print in a hotel oh, room, right. make the money, spend yeah. it, mm -hmm. you know, next day. Yeah. I'd have, have a stack of Bible paper like this right. and then stay in that city till it was, you know, all spent and then right. just go back to Knoxville. And so were you aware that you were federal? Is that why you were moving like this? Like never wanted to have too much on you? Well, yeah, or is I mean, it I, simply because you wanted money then because you were, you were coming down from your high and you need like, no, why were you moving in this kind of like, you know, factal, like piecemeal way as opposed to like, like my brain goes to, okay, I'm going to get as much Bible paper as I can in these different cities and then go back and then sit print. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. why, why were you moving like a cat? Like a thief well, in the I knife. Knew, I knew the Secret Service specifically investigates counterfeit money. So okay. like, yeah, uh, we were we were wondering about that too. Most people probably have no idea that the Secret Service doesn't just guard the president; they investigate counterfeit money. Do you know why that is? Um, why it's not the FBI? I think. Well, the Secret Service now does all financial crimes. Oh, really? Like check, they do check fraud, credit okay. card fraud, all that stuff. Oh. I think it's because. Um, 9-11, like terror, like the FBI started all in on the terrorist stuff. So then they just kind of kicked this other branch to the sea. I believe that's why. Okay. Um, but either way, like I knew, I knew that, um, mm -hmm. or I knew that the secret service investigated. So like local police can't really do much. No. <clears throat> I mean, of course they can arrest you if you're caught with it. Right. Um, but if it's like the way I was moving, like you can't, the, the local police wouldn't have caught me. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Cause it's like, I'm parking my car. You know, I'll go park in front of someone's house in a neighborhood over here and then walk a quarter of a mile to a mall and just yeah. hit up stores. So like worst case, they're not getting my license plate number. Even if they do know that I broke the bills there, they're looking for a 35-year-old a white male mm. wearing sunglasses mm -hmm. in Chattanooga. Yeah. And I don't even live in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not going to catch me. And, and plus, would local pigs know what a good counterfeit I've had, bill I've had even police feels like? Seize money from me. It was counterfeit. Some of it was counterfeit, and they just thought it was real money. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like they couldn't tell. Could, could you get to a point where you would forget yourself? Like was your mm, work so no, good? No, I kept them very separate. Okay, okay. Gotcha. It's so like, and that's that's one another thing is like some people I've given bills to, like people that would go break them for me. They think first thing, crumple them up and make it look old, crumple right. it up. <laughs> right. And uh, it's like, you don't want to do that first because um, the the pens, I'm spraying it with lacquer. So there's a seal over it, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's clear. You can't feel it or see it, but it's there. And if you crumple it up, it creates cracks in that lacquer oh, seal. Oh, right, right. So, I mean, the bills I was making looked fresh out of the bank, perfect uh -huh. $100 bills, but you don't want to. So I basically, when I made them, I got those little, uh, like s plastic sleeves that you put yeah. like antique currency in or whatever. Uh -huh. And I just have a bunch of those and I'd put them in there. So they were perfect. You know what I mean? So I kept them all separate. Right. I had two bags with real money and fake right. money. And how long would you have to wait after you put that final coat of uh seal on it? Uh, how long would you have to wait before you could fold them, crumple them? Well, I tried, I tried to not fold them. Right. Okay. Um, but so, so you I mean, they dried pretty quick, so, but you're, mm -hmm. so they felt like new money. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got to be on the low. You can't be just walking in with, with 10,000 in new money. Well, that's the other thing. Like I, cause I've read all these articles and indictments mm -hmm. of other counterfeiters, how they got caught. Yeah. Um, you know, what happened in their scenario yeah. to kind of learn from their mistakes. Yeah. So like 
one thing I found was uh, a lot of people would go break a bill. And if the cashier called them out, the police came, they'd find another 10,000 in fake bills on them. It's like, you can't deny that. No. So I would like have my wife with her purse, with all the counterfeit money, just walk in the mall. And I'd take one bill, put it in my wallet, go into a store, Mm -hmm. break it, and then go back and just, you know what I mean? So I never had, so I had deniability if, you know, something were to happen. Did you have a a straight job or did you have any kind of uh, legitimate income coming in? No, No, I was all in with that. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, were you ever approached by like, uh, I guess nobody knew who you were, right? Now, now that you're a public figure, do you get crime organizations reaching out to you like saying, hey, man, teach us the ways? <laughs> because this is like I mean, such a valuable, you know, if the Italian yeah. mafia st- saw you, they would absolutely try to pay you to get them to show you how to do it. Just the way that Mexican cartels pay yeah. Chinese chemists, they fly them over and bring them into the <laughs> I hills. Mean, I get lots of DMs. Uh, yeah, but, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, you know, they bring them over people. and show them how to cook. It's like the same way. Sh- show me how to cook money, yeah. you know, because it's such a, again, it's a rare, it's a rare thing. Who were when you, who are the people, like, what's the, what are the kinds of people that do have had big indictments for counterfeiting? Are they, are they, it's usually lone wolf lone type wolf. people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are, I mean, I'm sure there are cases of like big organized crime groups, uh-huh. um, but I, I think they probably don't get caught. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're, they're the ones that uh-huh. are probably still out there or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I nobody, mean, I was nobody dealing paid with you. like street gangs, like, right. you know, a lot of people from Detroit, like vice Lords and yeah. like that, but they were just the drug dealers I was selling them to. Like right. they had no I mean, why would you get involved with organized crime if you can print your own money? Like, why do you mm. need them for you? You might need people to sell them to or mm. to break them for you or whatever. Mm. But like, you don't need a boss above or, you know, no. a group above you yeah. if you're just printing it yourself. Like, right. You just stay yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would think. I mean, I mean I'm, you know, could be wrong. Well, if but. you had the ability to do it wholesale <laughs> on a massive, you know, level, then you would, you know, if somebody offered you a million bucks to teach them, you'd take the million and get out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and you know, like I said, a lot of people DM me, but I don't, I'm on parole. I don't take that. Yeah, so I don't no, even respond to those people. Yeah, Cause it's yeah. like, you just message me on hey, a bro, public we gotta platform talk. on record. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, nah, dude, like I just you, you ignore, see the, the, ignore you that. You see the emails I get full, <laughs> just telling on themselves yeah, emails. Exactly. Hey man. Hey Johnny, love the podcast. I listen to you in my truck while I'm transporting kilos of Coke across Canada. I live in Calgary, but I take stuff to yeah. Saskatchewan all the time. That last guy you had on was full of <laughs> like, can I come on your show? Yeah. I've noticed <laughs> lots of people try to hit me up like, like bragging about yeah. like they do. And it's yeah. like, dude, don't even, why are you telling me this? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a mistake on your part. So I can't take that seriously anyway. So how long does all this last? Uh, it was about two years. Okay. Two okay. years before. Um, so basically I was, I was started selling to this one dude from Cleveland. Um, and I was, you know, like I said before, I started buying just personal use heroin. I was getting like an eight ball a day from him for like 300 bucks. So just a few bills every day. Um, and I did that for like a month. So I probably, I got him for like 10 grand or so. Like, I don't know the exact number, but a decent amount of money. And did he uh, know they were fake? <laughs> no, not, but he found out. So like, I guess, um, on the, I've got like the interrogation tapes of him being interrogated and he explains this on those, but he said it he had one of my bills in his pocket and it was raining. Um, and the color shifting ink oh, right. came off cause it got wet. Um, so like he found out that there, and then he said he put it in a cup of water and I guess the bills, the pieces right. separated. Um, so oh, he, I, he found out they were fake. I didn't even ask you about that. The yes, them getting wet. So yeah. if it rained or, or any yeah, that's moisture got good. on them, that was it, yeah. right? Even humidity sometimes. That's why I kept them in the plastic cases, like, or the right. little sleeves. Right. Because, like, if it was a real humid area or humid day, yeah, they would, um, you know, start to separate. Start shit. bleeding. Yeah, they're, they're not. And that's the other thing why you don't really want to, like, stockpile them is because it right. is, like, uh, you know, they don't last forever. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're fake mm-hmm. bills. So it's like, yeah. Um, 
you know, if they get wet or humidity, they might start to peel. Yeah. Um, eventually, like, if you handle it too much, that matte lacquer starts to kind of uh, fade away or whatever. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's a big reason why it was like print 5,000, spend 5,000, mm -hmm. print, five, you know, just right. do it like that. Um, right. But so this guy, it got wet. Um, and at the time I was renting a house in Knoxville. Um, and I come home, it's like, it's kind of a long story, but like I was living with this girl, like she's like a roommate type deal. Um, and she was actually buying the heroin from him. Like I was in the car with her. She knew they're fake. She was one of the people that broke them for me. So I, I'd go to these other addicts and be like, if you know a plug, like I'll give you the money. You get it. We'll split the, mm -hmm. the profit or mm -hmm. dope or whatever. Um, so she was buying the from him through me basically. Um, but we lived together. So I guess when he found out they were fake, he went to her house to confront her about it, not knowing that like, I'm the one making them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I like pull up in my driveway um, and he's like yelling at her in the in front of the driveway. So I was like, God damn it. Like, this is going to be a problem. Like at the time I was like carrying pistols and shit. Like mm -hmm. I had a gun. I was thinking like, this is going to be a situation, but he didn't know who I was. He didn't know I was making them all that. So I just like got out of the car and you know, he was like, who the fuck is this? And she was like, Oh, it's just my roommate. Don't worry about it. So I just kind of walk by and go into the house. But as I'm walking by, I hear him be like, listen, I'm not even mad. Like, I just want to know where the f you got them from. Like, I want more of them. <laughs> so I like heard that and I was like, okay. So then I, you know, the next day I talk to her and mm -hmm. I'm like, give me his number. I'll just mm -hmm. call him. You know what I mean? Um, and I did. And basically at first he was kind of, you know, acting tough about it, pissed off. And I was like, listen, bro, like you self fentanyl dude like shut mm -hmm. up you're you're out and you're not even out money dude like you were able to spend I, i've been giving you these bills for a month and mm -hmm. you just found out like so you're not out money you know i think i ended up giving him a free thousand like 10 bills just mm -hmm. to like smooth the water or whatever but basically i was like you know if you want to start buying them from me like it that's fine mm -hmm. you know what i mean so he started you know, he'd go up to Cleveland. Most of these drug dealers would go up to their city once a month. They'd, yeah. they'd go up to Cleveland, Detroit. They'd, yeah. they'd buy a brick or two bricks and then come back to Knoxville. Yep. Get them off. Sell for a month yep. and then do it again. Mm -hmm. um, so I told him, I was like, you know, next time you go up to Cleveland, if you want, you know, 10 bands or whatever, just hit me, give me a few days notice and mm -hmm. I'll sell it to you for 2,500. So he started, we started doing that for a while. Um, and eventually like we were doing business. So we ended up renting a house together, uh, me and this dude from Cleveland. Um, so basically I was supposed to go up to Cleveland with him. Cause like I'd go with some of the dudes to their city to break bills. Cause I was traveling anyway, mm. they were going up there to mm. re up. So it was just like, let's go together. And you know, um, so I was supposed to go up with him this trip and I ended up, getting pulled over and arrested on like a, uh, expired license or some petty like traffic mm. ticket. It was like a warrant thing. I went to jail, bonded right out, got out. But you know, it was like a Friday. We were supposed to leave in a few hours and I get arrested. So he just went on to Cleveland without me. So like I sit in jail for a few hours, bond out. I go back to the house we're sharing and one of his little runner chicks, the chick that was like selling dope for him. Um, she was there. And I was like, you know, where's he? Where did he leave? He went up to Cleveland. She's like, yeah, I went up to Cleveland. So I was like, well, f it, whatever. The next day, um, I, I come out of the room and she's, she's sitting there and she's like, um, he told me not to tell anybody, but I just thought I'd let you know he got arrested up in Cleveland. So instantly I, you know, I knew like, why would he say, don't tell anybody? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> not a good sign. Mm -hmm. you know. No. I mean? So <laughs> she, and luckily she, warned me about that but um and there's a there's a lot of stuff i found out later like in discovery and stuff mm -hmm. so but at the time i was just thinking like that's sketchy i'm packing all my shit and leaving mm -hmm. so i packed everything up went to a hotel um maybe a day or two later he calls me um and we never talked on the phone like about anything bad you know what i mean so like he called me and was like 
oh, I met up with the maintenance man up at hotel here. I got uh, some Bibles for you. And I was like, okay. I shouldn't even answer the phone in retrospect, but I figured like, I'll just deny everything and just, you know, answer the phone and just whatever, you know what I mean? Not incriminate myself. They've got no evidence, you know, whatever. I assumed he was cooperating, but again, I shouldn't even answer it. But he talked about Bibles. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So why were you talking to him if you knew that he was informing? See, I, well, I didn't know. That's, that's why, but like I had suspicions, you know what I mean? Yeah. All, Cause all the girl said was he got arrested up in Cleveland. He told me, right. you know, he told me not to tell anybody, but mm -hmm. you know, he got arrested. I'm letting you know. So that was sketchy, but like, I wasn't really sure, you know, like, I, I don't know. And I was doing a lot of business. I was living in a house with this dude. Like, I don't know. I should know. I should have just ghosted him from there on out. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, we were doing a lot of business together. Like, so I answered the phone. I just figured I wouldn't talk about anything. If he brings something up, completely deny it, whatever. Um, so yeah, he's like, yeah, I got some Bibles for you. And I was thinking like, well, that's not incriminating necessarily. <laughs> like whatever. Um, but, but then he was like, um, he was acting weird. So I basically said, I'm like, dude, Summer told me you got arrested up in Cleveland. Like, that's sketchy. Why didn't, why is that not the first thing you said to me? And he was like, oh, it was just some petty shit. I bonded out. You know what I mean? Um, but he's like, but I couldn't re-up because I had to bond out or whatever. And... um so he's like, I couldn't re-up. I'm on my way back to Knoxville. Can you get me 700 grams of heroin from like one of your other people over the phone? So like that mm. was, as soon as he said that, I was like, bro, I'm like, you're, you're the drug dealer. I'm, you know, I'm not a drug dealer. Like, why would you even ask me for that over the phone or any in person, anything like you, you sell drugs. I don't, you know, I don't sell mm. drugs. And he was like, yeah, I know you don't, but I figured you could help me out. And I was like, no, dude, like I'm not getting involved in that and hang up. Mm. So I thought, I think to myself, I'm like, that conversation went all right. He even admitted on the phone that I didn't sell drugs. You so know they I mean? were trying to get him to, they were trying to get him to rope you into a drug charge. Yeah. Yeah. Cause oh, he, weird. he told, and again, like later I found out cause I listened to the interrogation tapes after I was arrested and all yeah. that. Um, and like he, he said, he told on me right away, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Cause so basically they, they got him with, uh, I think fifteen thousand in real money and mm. five thousand in fake bills. How did they ar arrest him? What was it in like a drug bust? No, he. See, it's all long stories, but basically, in a nutshell, like he bought a car from this junkie from some dude who was selling. It. He was like, it was, this was like two thousand eighteen, and I think it was like a two thousand fifteen Charger mm. with like rims on it. Like mm -hmm. it looked like a nice new car. And he was like, yeah, I bought this from this dude for 500 bucks and an eight ball. And I was like, dude, that's stolen, bro. It's a stolen car. hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. He's like, no, he had the title and everything. Like, it's all good. And I was like, bro, it's a stolen car. <laughs> like, yeah. like there's no way. Why would anyone do that? Like it runs. He's like, yeah, it runs. It runs great. I'm like, it's a stolen car. Mm. Like, it's gotta be. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, no, I got the title. It's all good. I was like, whatever, dude. Like, you know, so the car was stolen. Um, so he was driving, they pull him over to stolen car. They find like a little Louis Vuitton bag with a bunch of money. Mm. In it. You know, he's a 25 year old black kid, you know, yeah. in a car with Knoxville plates going to Cleveland, Ohio with fucking 25, yeah. or 20 grand on him or whatever. So it didn't look good. You know I mean? They seized the money, assume he's a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is all just bad luck. Him getting pulled over. Well, he was driving a stolen car. <laughs> I mean, right. No, but I'm saying like, they didn't know it was stolen until they pulled him over. Oh yeah. Right? They, they gotcha. probably just ran his plates yeah. and then, yeah. Okay. You know, pulled him over, found yeah. the money and whatever. But so the police arrest him on, I guess, I, I don't know what his original charge, the stolen car, I think just mm -hmm. originally, but then they seize his money as like assuming it's drug money. Come to find out they go to deposit it in their like seized funds bank account or whatever. Yeah. And the bank comes back and is like 5,000 of this is counterfeit money. Uh -huh. So then the secret service get involved, yeah. interrogate him. Um, and of course he's like, yeah, we like, this is Jeff Turner is making them like mm -hmm. he lives in Knoxville, you know, we we're living, we're sharing a house right now. I can bring you right to him, mm -hmm. you know, all this. And he, he even tried, he was like, but all my drugs are in the house. So like, can you let me tip off my people first? And they're like, no, like we're 
fucking talking yeah, about? Yeah. Like, yeah, they're like, like, hey, absolutely. you haven't done this before. He's like, that you is, obviously don't know yeah. what we do. He, he wasn't very bright, dude. Like, but, uh, but why would they try to have him set you up on a drug buy <laughs> if it was the Secret Service trying to get to your well, counterfeit that's, that's operation? The thing. He because. He never admitted to being a drug dealer at first. And then they were like, cooperate. You got to be honest. If we think you're lying, no cooperation, blah, blah, blah. So then he told on me, this dude's counterfeiting it. And of course they were like, you remember, you got to be honest if you're going to cooperate about everything. And Mm -hmm. they were like, so tell us the truth. You're a drug dealer. Like, where'd this money come from? Not only five of it's fake. Like you got another 15. Mm -hmm. Um, So he basically admitted, he's like, yeah, you know, I sell heroin and, and drive it you know, a cell in Knoxville uh, from Cleveland, uh, you know, he told him the whole thing mm-hmm. that he was doing. Um, so then they start talking about me and the counterfeit money. And, and of course he's like, he says, he's like, well, he doesn't just know me though. He deals with a lot of big drug dealers from all over like Detroit and Atlanta and all this. So then they, I guess they just saw another opportunity mm-hmm. trying to set me up with drugs as well. Um, so yeah, but. Okay. So he calls you, but you don't go for it. No. Okay. No. So what happens after that? Um, basically like I just hang up and I thought I was in the clear, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I didn't really say, I mean, I figured it wasn't good. You yeah. know what I mean? Just because he, he never, like he said he got arrested, but like, I still wasn't certain he was cooperating, but I was, mm-hmm. you know, had s- yeah. strong suspicion. Yeah. Um, but I was in a hotel room on the other side of town. The hotel room wasn't in my name. My car wasn't in my name. You know what I mean? I figured like I'm safe at the moment. I was probably like just thinking like I probably need to get out of town. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like I didn't think they were gonna kick my door in the next morning, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, like so I guess through that phone call, um, they, you know, pinged my phone, like GPS tracked it to like they knew which hotel I was in through the cell phone call. They didn't know which room. Wow. Um You didn't dump your phone, obviously. No. Were you working off burner phones? Yeah. Okay. I, I used to buy a new phone. Like I'd go get the little simple mobile at Dollar General, yeah. like the prepaid mm-hmm. cards. Like every week, I'd change mm-hmm. my number and you know the people I wanted to continue doing mm-hmm. business with, and just text them and say this yeah. is my new number. You know, they can still ping your phone though, even if well, it's yeah, a burner. Yeah, if they have the number, of course. Yeah. Um, but but you know that they didn't know which room I was in. They yeah. just saw this is the area. Yeah. Like he's right here. He's probably at this hotel. Wow. So you um, went to the hotel. You got all your things on you? You have all your yeah, printing was, material on you? I was in the hotel room um, with my wife and this other girl. Um, and so the next morning, um, my wife and this girl, Dylan, decide to go shopping. You know what I mean? Like, I give them some kind of money, mm-hmm. and they're going to go shopping. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm supposed to make, like, I think it was 54 5600 for this guy from Detroit. So I start printing, you know what I mean? Um, so they leave to go shopping, I assume. Um, but I guess they, the feds were staking out the hotel. Um, like they had a description of, you know, my wife or whatever and all this. So when they saw her get into the car, they pull her over immediately, arrest her, find the hotel room key. And then, so that's how they found out which room I was in. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just sitting there printing, you know what I mean? And I hear a knock on the door. And uh, so I go look through the peephole, and it's just, like, black. Like, somebody's thumb was over it mm-hmm. or something. So, like, I was thinking, at first, you know, I mean, at, at the moment, you don't really know what to th- Like, I thought I was maybe getting somebody was trying to rob me or mm-hmm. something. Because mm-hmm. um, I figured, like, this room isn't in my name. Um, you know, like, how would anyone know where I was at? Mm-hmm. Um was it in your wife's name? No, no. It was in uh, the the other girl that was staying with us had a fake ID, mm. and she would because she was like selling dope for the Detroit people mm. that I was making the money for. Mm. It's a all mm. long story. But, Did anyone um, try to rob you for your fake money? No. Was that ever a concern no. of yours? No. Okay. I was only really dealing with like people that had money like yeah. big drug dealers like mm-hmm. moving bricks and right. stuff so like i mean i guess they could have tried <laughs> but about it anyway you know i mean you know it. were you gonna rob me for ten thousand in fake money <laughs> yeah. and lose the connect to your fake money <laughs> right. to make you know what i'm saying right like, yeah I'm, that never happened but um i mean there were some people that i'd rip off and they found out and they were kind of pissed <laughs> like they were probably looking for me but i just you know 
the feds can't find me. You're not going to find me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm yeah. stop popping out of hotels yeah. and keeping myself. And mm-hmm. um, so I just ghost them if they, you know, got all aggressive. But so yeah, basically um, the, the peephole was blacked out. Um, and I like look through the little window and I see like just the shoulder of like a Knox County Sheriff patch. Mm. You know what I mean? So the, at that point I was like, you know what I mean? I try to flush this money down the toilet. Um, and like I flushed a few grand or whatever, flush it, throw a few more in there. But like, I, I assume they shut the water off cause it like the water just didn't, wasn't there. Uh. I don't know if they thought I had like kilos of heroin or something uh. cause a dude, what dude was telling them. Or whatever. But either way, there was, like, mo- counterfeit mm. money in the toilet, like, the printers, everything. Like, it's in a hotel room. At that point, I was just like, yeah, it's jig is up. Like, <laughs> what the f*** am mm. I going to do? You know what I mean? So I just sit down and, like, like yeah, after about, like, five minutes, like, the door at the hotel was, like, steel reinforced. Uh-huh. Like, they were hitting it with the battering ram for, like, five solid minutes. <laughs> and you're so just, I was well, just you're sitting, sitting on the floor? Panic attack, like, <laughs> like smoking a cigarette, like, just waiting for him. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, what the f- else do you do that's such a funny scene to picture in my mind you're just sitting there smoking your last cigarette yeah i knew I, as, yeah i was like is there i'm going, banging a battering ram prison <laughs> like so yeah but how okay so they finally get the door down are the, are there guns drawn oh yeah yeah there was uh cleveland secret service knoxville secret service uh, organized crime unit, drug task force, yeah. Knox County Sheriff's. Okay. Yeah. There was okay. probably like 30 or 40 people. So they brought you in. What were your charges? Um, so I knew the feds were going to pick it up because like mm-hmm. the secret service was there, yeah. like multiple districts of mm-hmm. the secret service. Um, but originally they, they had me on state charges of criminal simulation over 60,000. Um, and oh, then that's the benchmark. For well, like, there's like, yeah, it's like 10,000, uh-huh. whatever it is, 30,000, 60,000, 100,000. You know, there's oh, different like uh, levels. That's interesting. I didn't even know there were state uh, statutes it's for It's criminal. They call it criminal simulation. Okay. It's basically just like the state charge of, for fraud or like, yeah. but they falls in counterfeiting and yeah. fraud and check fraud, whatever. Right, right. Um, so like that was, you know, I go in on criminal simulation um, and- it took a f- like my lawyer told me, um, they're like, yeah, like the feds are probably going to pick this up, but most likely they need to get a warrant to go through your computer mm. and all that stuff. So like there would probably be a little bit, but right. they're most likely going to pick it up. Are you sitting in jail or do you bail out? No, uh, I was sitting in jail. They they see like they seized my cars, all my uh-huh. money. My wife was arrested. Like so. Right. So what did they seize? Um, like how much? In two fake cars. Cash. I only had, I was printing, what was it, like 50, 54, 5,600 or whatever for these dudes. Yeah. And I probably had another five grand. So th- 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 it was like, oh, that's not that 10, much. 10,000 of counterfeit money. Well, what f- me was the computer because on each bill, I changed the serial number. Mm. So all the serial numbers were different. So, like on the digital layers, each serial number, I'd just copy and paste and mix them up. You know what I mean? So they were all different. But so I had like, 25 to 40 templates files with different serial numbers. So I'd print one. So all the bills were different serial numbers. Um, but that then linked me to every counterfeit bill with that serial number. They could just, you know, link back to me. They, they can evidence. trace all of those bills. Oh yeah. How do they do that? The secret service, like when they file, when they get a counterfeit bill and like put it in their file or whatever, they, you know, write down, you know, they've got, a database of like what the serial number was, certain counterfeiting methods, paper used, all this stuff. But I'm saying if you printed, how many fake bills do you think you printed lifetime that you had to go in and, and use, you know, alter the serial number on? There was, so like, like I said, I had probably had 25 to 40 templates of different serial numbers. So basically okay. every 40 bills, which is like every uh, 4,000 would yeah. all have different serial numbers. But then I'd I see. I, you, you know, see every day, the serial numbers. all the money I had had different serial numbers. Right. But then tomorrow, I'd print the same serial numbers. Right. It would just be, you know. So basically, they could link me. But yeah, overall, it was probably. I mean, it's hard to say, but two to five thousand a day for two years. You know, what I mean, 
a million, over a million, a million, million fake and a half. bills. Yeah. So, but how are they able to prove that? How's the government able to prove that? Because they found files on my computer. And like when you zoom in, like I edit, you know how I said I deleted the blur of the, yeah. so like there are little imperfection, you know what I mean? Like, oh, maybe there's a couple gray pixels here, but they're on every bill they seized. And with the serial numbers they found on my computer. But like, right. So they just. Right. I'm just curious because like, I'm just thinking about a defense for you. I'm thinking like a lawyer here. There's no way they could have seized a million bills. So uh, how do they track how are they able to put that on you? Um, how does, well, they, how does they probably do seize? I mean, all so counterfeit bills, like when you go spend them at a store, right? It, they accept it. They put it in the drawer at the end of the night, they go put it in the safe at the end of the week, an armored car picks up the deposit, yeah. takes it to the bank. When the bank gets it, the bank will know it's fake. And then they call the secret service. They call the store. They say, Hey, we found 500 in counterfeit bills in your deposit. We contact the Secret Service, blah, blah, blah. So now, I mean, the Secret Service seized every bill at this point, probably that I made. I see. Unless there's some floating around in the black market, right. you know, underworld. Drug I trade see. Or so, so that's, so the bank, there's no getting by the bank once these Pretty make much. it there. I mean, at least my bills. Right. Like I've heard there's like super notes that are like yeah. the North Korean government or like <laughs> printing right. exact replicas. Right. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that but even then- the Fed, the, the Federal Reserve sees bills, e even real bills to destroy them and reprint them. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like they have a record of every serial right. number. So if they see duplicates, wow. even if it's a North Korean super note, they get they realize, oh, well, there's two real bills with the same serial number. They can't be real. One of them came. Right. Real. You know what I mean? So like eventually they right. they find all of them. OK, I mean? so all of those serial numbers of mm -hmm. every fake bill were registered with the secret service before they even knew who you were. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And so it was just a matter of time after you got pinched that they took those seized serial numbers from a computer yeah. and linked them up with uh, the counterfeit yeah, bills I, that were registered. I sat in jail on state charges for three months before the feds picked it up. So like they had to build the case. They didn't know who I was right. until he told them like the day before I got arrested. Right. So like, yeah, they had to get warrants for the computer, yeah. build a case on me, whatever. And once they had, you know, yeah. enough evidence or whatever. They, what they was your bail? Them. Did they give you a bail? Um, well, not in the feds in, in the state. I forget what it was too much. I didn't have, it was like right. 200,000 or something, something like that. Yeah. I, I don't remember, but uh -huh. so you couldn't um, make bail. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the feds, you know, I go to court, um, and on the state charges and they like drop all charges which I already knew why, uh -oh. you know Yeah, what I mean? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, dude, you're getting, I'm like, nah. Yeah, like, but the real OGs are like, nah, yeah. it's, you know, don't celebrate yet. Yeah. The so state they, drops the charges. Yeah, and then they, in Knoxville, it's like the federal courthouse is across the street. So it's uh -huh. like, that's what they say. Like, oh, you walk across the street. You're walking across uh -huh. the street, you know what I mean? So what happened? What, what Walk us through mm -hmm. how it became federal, like how you found out. Um. Well, my lawyer tipped me off. She's yeah. like, yeah, uh, they're going to drop all charges. And most likely, she already knew, like, the feds are going to pick it up. Yeah. So I was like, I already expected that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but. Uh, so you did you, they have to bring you into state court and then the, <laughs> the DA says we're, we're dropping these. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, so they drop all charges and then immediately I put me in the little van, drive me across the yeah. street, take me to the U S Marshall building. Yeah. And now uh, you're in serving the, the indictment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Change mm -hmm. my clothes out, you know, to the, the tan federal, whatever. Mm. Um, and then are you in the same jail the, when, yeah. when you're in the being charged with state? Yeah. Okay. Um, which like normally in, in Knoxville area, the, Blunt County is like the federal holding facility, which is like the county right next to Knox County. Mm -hmm. But unless, like in my case, I was arrested and already housed in Knox County. So when they went to federal, like there's federal inmates in Knox County as well, but mm -hmm. you have to be charged in mm -hmm. Knoxville to stay there. Otherwise, like everybody goes to Blunt County. What was your wife charged with? Um, well, her charges were dropped. That was like a part of my plea uh -huh. agreement. But uh, I think at first it was criminal simulation. Yeah. I think they didn't have a whole lot of evidence against her. They had uh, that that bolo was me and her at the register. So I think it was like her bail wasn't a lot because they only really had her 
And they didn't even arrest her in the hotel room. Uh, like she got in the car and they pulled her over. Yeah. You know, I think she maybe had possession of counterfeit money mm -hmm. and like spending one or two bills, but like it, it was under a thousand. Like it, the feds weren't really interested. Uh, right. In okay. Her. So she was out. She was out while you were in there fighting yeah. the case. Yeah. Okay. So she got to see the the kids didn't get. Yeah. No. Seized yeah. Or the kids were with like my parents uh -huh. for. A, a week and then she got out and you know so you coming down off heroin in the county jail yeah, yeah. <sighs> that sucks damn dude i was yeah. around a lot of that yeah. that's it's brutal you think it's fun. bad for you yeah i'm <laughs> a bystander like me just trying to get some sleep no, I, I know i've been in jail sober and not sober yeah. so i get it yeah it sucks um but yeah so like uh after they served me the indictment um maybe like a month or so later, I get out on pretrial release. Um, and, you know, basically, like, a condition is uh, I have to go to rehab. I got to go to a halfway house mm -hmm. until... But then COVID hit, so all the courts were shut down. So I was out on pretrial for, like, two years. Right. Um, what was the maximum you were facing? So originally, it was, like... About three years. Like, the feds is, like, a range. Yeah. You, you weren't federal. Right? You were in state. Right. Um, but, like, so there's sentencing guidelines. It goes by, like, your criminal history and, uh, like, the the point. There's a point system about mm -hmm. what your charges were or whatever, and it graphs out. Right. So, but, like, in my case, it was kind of weird because with counterfeit money, there's enhancements along with, like, security features that you attempt to fraudulently make or whatever you know what i mean so like if somebody just printed photocopied a hundred dollar bill their points would be less than me who you know took multiple steps to yeah. fraudulently make yeah you you had a computer bill. you were y yeah. you were more sophisticated yeah but basically i was only looking at like three years because yeah. I, I only had a point on my criminal history yeah um what was your first point from uh well i uh, let's see. I got arrested when I was 16 with like a weed pipe, but I was a minor. So that yeah. didn't go against me. My first felony, I was 19. I got caught with like a half pound of weed yeah. and, uh, a DUI. So, but that was adjudication withheld because it was my first felony as, right. a, as an adult. But so that, that wasn't on my points. Okay. And then I had like a larceny charge. Hmm. So that was my only thing that the feds could like hold against me uh, in the point system. Right. So like really with such a low criminal history, I was only looking at like three years. Um, so this sounds like a great crime to do. I mean, I, I don't recommend it, but yeah, no, like white, course, white no, collar would, crimes are definitely better than selling heroin. We would <laughs> never recommend this to anyone, but Absolutely if not. somebody were to do a white collar <laughs> crime, I mean, yeah. what is three years in a federal camp? Yeah. Do you want to play tennis for three years? Yeah. And eat Go ice cream? Out, read some books. You know, it, it, it was good for me, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got sure. me sober. Yeah. Uh, you know, doing all these podcasts now, writing a book. So yeah. it's like, there's potential for the future, I guess. Um, what, were there any uh, complications with your case or does it seem pretty cut and dry? <laughs> you know, they caught you red handed. Yeah. Not a lot of mitigating circumstances. Yeah, there was no trial for me. Yeah. I would not, no. <laughs> you know, they, they got me for sure. There's, you know, informants that were obviously willing to testify against me. Oh, so they found that, the drug dealers that you were selling well, the bills no, to? Just, just that guy, E okay. from Cleveland. Right. But, I mean, you yeah. know, they've got me. Uh, Dead to rights. Like phone conversations, which I didn't really admit to something, but like he said he had a box of Bibles to give me. Like it mm -hmm. didn't look good, you know, mm -hmm. and then they find computers and files and mm -hmm. printers and counterfeit currency like uh like the bills that i was making at the time not all of them were even glued together yet so it was yeah. like you know i mean i couldn't even necessarily say that i got those from someone like it was yeah there was no defense i didn't think so um, is you a million bills a million plus bills you printed is there like a range of sentencing like if you yeah. had printed like 10 million or how, how does that work so well, the Secret Service really with me hard. They were they were good to me actually. After like after, so like the plea, uh, the deal they offered me basically was like, um, if you plead guilty and explain to us how you made them, like mm -hmm. every step. He's like, we want to make a video to train future Secret <laughs> Service agents. Like right. so, like you 
basically like make bills, explain the whole process on film, um, and plead guilty. We won't charge your wife with anything. Mm -hmm. We'll keep, uh, basically like the restitution amount, which is the range that gets enhanced. So like, I think the range is like a hundred thousand and up is at a time. Um, like a million and up is at a time, all this. So they were like, at the time they were like, we, we've got 800,000 that we can link to you. Mm. Like he was like, I'm sure there's more, but only, you know, he's like, how much did you know you print? And I was like, dude, I don't, I don't know. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't mm. keep books. <laughs> like what's the, what are the sentencing guidelines if it's over a million? Um, well, it depends on the, the criminal history. It's, it's right. all like a graph. Right. But what's the max? Factors. Do you like, Oh, I think 20 years. If you, okay. if you printed like 10 million and you have a criminal history, uh -huh. like, yeah, you yeah. It's probably 20 years. Throw the book at you. Yeah. But, um, so in this case, he basically said, we won't charge your wife and we'll keep, we'll lower that amount from the 800,000 that it's currently at to under a hundred thousand. It's like 96,000, oh, which wow. gave me a huge and like cooperating yeah. as far as making the video yeah there was no one to even really snitch on because like my only co-defendant set me up yeah you know what i mean but it basically like with the cooperation credit and the lower restitution put yeah. me in like a, a shorter range yep. so it was basically 10 to 16 months was was the new range it was like 28 to 36 oh, i should have been a counterfeiter yeah. <laughs> should have been a counterfeiter still got time yeah. yeah so so what uh but i can't even draw you like look at my handwriting <laughs> like this is i went to college and graduated in four years and you can't read a thing on there it's i have no artistic ability i have i i, I mean ask this guy i didn't even know how to use zoom on the computer yesterday i, I you know yeah. you just have that mind for it uh, so you basically like, you were like, uh, the movie catch me if you can, you showed them exactly <laughs> yeah. how it, it's done. Did they, have they offered to like you employment? Have the feds, no. the feds I joked about that. And like the, the dude, special agent, Greg Watson was like, you know, he was like, Oh, maybe finish, finish your mm. sentence first. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, I doubt they want to hire me. I don't think it doesn't seem like there's enough of a demand for it. Like if counterfeiting was a bigger deal, a bigger problem, they might hire a guy like you well, as an yeah, expert. He, he said, um, and like, like I said, they were really cool. Once I pleaded guilty, like yeah. he basically said, like he was really like complimentary, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like he was saying, like I spent a lot of time, uh, dealing with this prop money and these calls for this garbage counterfeit. He was like, um, he was like, your bills are the best I've seen in 25 years. And like, wow. it's not all the time that we, I get to investigate like a, like a professional counterfeiter yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So like, he was really nice about it yeah. after I agreed to plead guilty. Yeah. <laughs> you he know made I mean? his job fun yeah. too. Yeah. You know? yeah, for sure. So they, uh, flew and I didn't even know I was going to do this. My lawyer, I mean, I agreed to the video thing, but like, I didn't know that they didn't give me a date or anything like mm. that. So like I was supposed to meet with my lawyer, I go downtown and she's like, oh, we got to go to the Secret Service building. And I was like, oh, damn it, okay. I walk in there and like, yeah, there's like a film crew and lights and like they mic me up like on the spot. I was like, oh, damn, like, I was like, what do you want to know? <laughs> yeah, are we, are we podcasting? And yeah, and they were like, everything. Just make make two bills, explain wow. the process, explain how you learned it, you know. Wow. All this stuff. And I told them basically what, you know, I'm wow. telling you like about Google patents, yeah. fly eye lenticular lens arrays. Yeah. There's a, or was, I don't even know if they still exist, but years ago it was a company called Microlux, uh, DP lenticulars that sell the film that you can make the, the strip. For, for the strips on the new yeah. hundreds. Um, and they didn't even know I was using Bible paper. Wow. They, they were like, they asked me like, what kind of paper did you use? Yeah. So I thought they had like labs and tests and they, I figured they already knew. Right. Like that's why I went to bookstores instead of just ordering it online. Cause I was like, I don't want to <laughs> order a pallet of Bible paper to Knoxville, Tennessee right. when I'm, you know, but they didn't even know what I was using. So like I answered all those questions. I used a iridescent green eyeshadow to replicate the color shifting ink. Wow. Um, it, I took like, it's basically like a pigment and made. So you would go buy uh, like ladies eyeshadow yeah, at the store? Yeah, Revlon holographic green wow. eyeshadow. Wow. Um, what other thing know. blew their mind that did they didn't know? 
uh, well, I, f- I feel like the fly island, the blue strip, yeah. like explaining one, how I learned that just through Google patents. He was yeah. like, God oh, damn. Like, I didn't even think that that, <laughs> you know, is public yeah. record. Uh-huh. Um, and like, you know, the eyeshadow and Bible paper thing. Like, yeah. I think those, he said, those are very, um, like unique counterfeiting methods yeah. that they've never seen before. Yeah. So a lot of people use nail polish to make the color shifting ink. But he said he's never seen eyeshadow yeah. like making my own stuff out of that pigment. Yeah. Um, and people say like spray counterfeit bills with hairspray um, to to mm-hmm. so the pens work on them. But I found that it it dries like glossy. It looks glossy. Right. So that's how I learned the matte lacquers was trying the hairspray because right. I read that online. And I did it and I was like, this looks f-ing glossy. So then I was like, you know, thought to get a flat matte. Right, you know, spray can. See, the feds could have so, known all this if they had just Googled. Yeah, <laughs> like sometimes it's just sitting right in front of your nose. Yeah, I like all these. Like uh, most of the methods I use, like I'd read and Google, like some forum or some mm-hmm. asshole says use hairspray, it works, and then like I'd take that and try it, and it didn't really work very well. So then I'd like expand on it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and like the invisible ink UV pens are like. Uh, they're marketed for like little girls' diaries. You know what I mean? Like a girl can write in her diary and it's invisible so no one can read her diary, but then wow. it's got a black light on the cap. So then you can wow. see it. So when I saw that, I was like, like that's what I need. Yeah. And I found it in red ink and it's, you just draw a line over the strip, but it's invisible until you shine a black light on it and then it glows red. So it's like, you know. Yeah. Everything got better as I went along. One cashier like went to scratch the shirt. You know what I'm talking about? Like feel the texture. Right. Um, and she like, didn't feel it and she still accepted the bill. She like, yeah. just took a double look at it and was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it must be real. It's just weird. I don't feel. So I was, I knew I needed to do something yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, I went to like a hobby lobby and found a fine tip, invisible glue pen for like embossing mm. and then just drew little lines. And yeah. then when you'd scratch it, you'd feel this little wow. texture, you know what I mean? Yeah. It all progressively you know, they got better and better as I, what do you, what do you want when you look back on it? Like, what do you wish you had done differently in terms of like trying to get away with it or trying to, trying to be print more? Like what, what, what did you wish you would have done in during your I, run? I wish I would have gotten off drugs sooner for sure. Yeah. I would have, uh, I probably wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have dealt with certain people. You know what I mean? If I wasn't on heroin and I, you know, obviously I would have saved a lot more money and probably been smarter about stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a pretty high functioning addict, I'd like yeah. to think, but still it didn't help the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like my kids, like not, you know, uh, I, I should have just like, I mean, they weren't involved, but like they probably didn't, you know, it wasn't good for them. Me no. getting arrested. Yeah. Their mom getting arrested, you know, yeah. all this. Shit. Yeah. So definitely some, some regrets or things I would have done differently. Do you wish you would have done it bigger? I mean, I've thought about it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, should have just went to a cabin in the woods somewhere and printed out a million. Mm-hmm. And then, but I, that was the thing. I couldn't really do that because of the dope problem. So it was like, I had to be in the city and, yeah. and you know what I mean? What am I going to buy a kilo and go sit in a cabin? Like that probably wouldn't end well either. No, so it's like, no. you know, but yeah, I mean, I I thought about just like the, the couple guys that wanted like 500,000, I was like mm-hmm. racking my brain. Like, how am I going to produce? Where am I going to get that much paper? Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to like, I'd go through every day. I'd go through a couple cans of matte lacquer spray, right. a can of Gorilla Glue spray, uh, probably $80 worth of printer ink. Yeah. Uh, every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah. So I had to at least go buy supplies. Have and, access you know, to Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. it is what it is though. Yeah. So, uh, you finally plead out, where do they send you? Um, so yeah, after COVID all this, um, I end up getting sentenced to 10 months. It was the low end of the 10 Mm -hmm. to 16, which is cool. Um, and then they, I went to FMC Lexington, which is like, it, it was a federal like medical center. Mm -hmm. Um, but after COVID they stopped transferring patients from like two medical centers or something, I guess they just started taking to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So they basically just turned FMC Lexington into like a low security prison for whatever. So I, you know, did my 10 months there and who's in the federal lows. A lot of people. I mean, a lot of people, of course, but like what kind of, is it mostly like white collar criminals? There's a lot of that. Um, 
And it's like, usually, you know, in the feds, uh, as your time, like, you know, you, you'll go to a USP if you have a violent crime yeah. in 20 years. And then once you get your sentence down to 10 years or whatever, yeah. I think you go to a go to a medium. medium or I think even lows, you can have 10 years yeah. and under. Okay. So it could but be people coming off big stretches. Yeah. Or- it's a lot of people that are, have two years left on yeah. their 20 year sentence. Right. And they're, you know, it's not very violent in a low, no. you know what I mean? It's just people trying to do their time. Yeah. Um, you know, there's like fights, and but people weren't yeah. stabbing each other right. and killing each other. Cause everybody's almost out the door. Trying you know to get home. Mean? Um, but yeah, so I mean, it wasn't. Did you meet any other counterfeiters in there? Uh, no, no. Yeah. There was one dude who claimed to do checks, counterfeit checks. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he was a chomo just saying that because I, <laughs> I asked him about it and I was like, you don't know anything about counterfeiting right. checks, dude. Right. Well, maybe he was a chomo who printed checks. <laughs> maybe. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them in, in Lowe's and camps, or not, maybe not camps, but like Lowe's. A lot That's where they put a I lot know. of chomos and they just, they can't walk the yard and they're yeah. Stuck. Even yeah. even in lows, they can't oh, walk yeah. the yard. Yeah. Wow. They'll get beat up. I mean, yeah, off. for the most part. Just yeah. like most of them, you don't even really have to beat them up. It's just you intimidate them. Like yeah. get the f- out of here. <laughs> you know, and then they just get scared and go play Dungeons and Dragons. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's something a kid would do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where where were you were in Oregon? I was in State, Oregon, right? Yeah, a lot of chomos. Was it really? A lot of, I mean, of course. Like, there's chomos everywhere, bro. It's crazy. Like, if we put in where the sex offenders are right now, I mean, this whole area would probably come up red. Yeah, you know? I guess so. <laughs> it's just, Shit it's what it seems like. Up. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I was in Oregon. I was in a maximum security. There weren't as many in the max, but then, yeah, when you get to a lower security level, yeah, there there are quite a few, or or like it's a lot of DUIs. It's a lot of like DUIs. working class. Well, yeah, a like lot of working. You got five DUIs. Or something? Yeah, exactly. In Oregon mm-hmm. now, if you get three DUIs in one year, you, it's a felony. You go to prison. Hmm. But it's like, let's be reasonable. Uh, I mean, you still got two DUIs. They still that's a two yeah. one too many DUIs. Yeah, yeah. You get three Deweys in a year. I mean, it's kind of obviously you're not learning time. a lesson, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know if that's a... So you knew that you couldn't get back in the game. What did you do with your time? Like, were you just sobering up? Did you have to go to like 12-step meetings or anything like that Uh, while you were down? I did when I was on Uh pretrial. Because that was like, you know, and I wanted to get clean and glad I did. Absolutely. But like, that was a a court-ordered thing. Like, I had to go to a month rehab thing and then like this halfway house that it's basically like a sober halfway house type uh, thing where they got na programs and stuff yeah but by the time i was sentenced uh to, to prison like i was i'm pretty over the drugs right. you know what i mean and then right. i just did my time worked yeah. out read a bunch of books did uh, anybody uh try to get you to contact them like knowing that you're you know knowing that you're this kind of unique brilliant counterfeiter did anybody in prison try to oh, hook up with you on the outside uh, to get back in the game? No, there, so you, there were some people while I was in there that have have time left, or maybe they're out now. I don't know, but like they wanted to do business when yeah. they got out. You yeah. know what I mean? There's one dude, like I guess he was from Detroit and sold a bunch of heroin, um, and like kind of got away with it. Like he had like thirty, forty million dollars from selling heroin. Yeah. And then bought a bunch of dispensaries and yeah. like got out of the dope game. Wow. And but for some reason he was saying like the feds got him for like a money law, like something about mm-hmm. to do with money. Um and then I guess he tried to bribe a judge and and then they charged him with that too. Yeah. And uh like he was talking all about he wanted to, you know launder my yeah. counterfeit money through his sneaker stores throughout the country yeah. and all this and i was uh, like that seems hot yeah I was that like, seems Dude. hot bro <laughs> yeah I'm like I'm, I'm trying to just stay straight you it know is pretty I mean? unbelievable when when you talk to some of those cats in the feds though they they are some really unique successful yeah. criminals absolutely you know like like black guys who have made that kind of money selling dope yeah i mean it's very rare to uh, that you're able to stay out long enough to be able to make $50 million yeah. selling dope and not get killed or locked up. 
Yeah, they, and you, and those are the kind of people you meet when you're in the feds. Yeah, the so feds it's have it's really big, interesting. And, and usually the big time people, uh, you know, don't necessarily have a reputation for like they're quiet about it for sure until you one on one talk. To yeah, them. and like you know, everyone's got paperwork in there, and mm-hmm. so like you know they're not in state and like county jails. Like everybody's a kingpin, you know yeah. what I mean? But no one has paper. Like they're charged with petty theft. But like yeah. I sell bricks of you know yeah. coke. But like in the feds, <laughs> but it's I like, had to steal. Yeah, they got the paperwork to prove it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's definitely interesting. It's not. I don't think the feds was. It's not what I would have imagined though. At least like because like you hear violence in prison and all this shit, and like lows, and even like mediums. Some mediums aren't very violent. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people aren't necessarily inherently trying to kill each other. At least no. not not in the lows, you know what I mean? Like no. I only saw a few fist fights. Like yeah. some people walk out of the the cell with like black eyes and mm-hmm. but like everybody kept their violence and what what was going on like For quiet, sure. you know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. it, it wasn't as uh you know violent as is no, media, we we, media rent, we recommend federal prison yeah. pretty much everybody on this show, especially yeah. a minimum. You should go there. Oh, absolutely. You haven't been there? It's, it's great, really. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> You're missing out. It's like you haven't been on spring break. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. So do you think now you're almost off paper? You've been home. You're running this great print shop, which we can give a shout out to, by the way. Uh, yeah, you made yeah. these stickers for us. Yeah. Uh, what's next for you? Like you've been on every podcast. You've, you've, you know, you're kind of like this internet crime figure now. Mm. Um, so what do you think you want to do with it? Um, well, I mean, I've optioned uh, my life rights to a film company um, and they're, you know, writing the screenplay and all mm. that, whether it gets picked up or not, you know, that's to be determined. Um, I'm writing a book currently. Um, and yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm just going with the flow of things. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. That's um, cool. That's a good attitude to have. Yeah. Do you find it hard to stay off drugs or, you know, being back in Knoxville, do you like, do you ever get, uh, I don't know, tempted to relapse? Not, not really. Um, you know, I have a drink here and there now, so mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like that's my mm-hmm. stress reliever, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, go out on a weekend, you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, I'm too busy to even, Yeah, dude, I work, you know. 7 30 to 6 every day travel for interviews and podcasts mm-hmm. and writing my book like mm-hmm. i just stay busy yeah the drugs are kind of i'm glad it's a thing of the past yeah, for, for sure. sure yeah you know do they're kind of special do the feds have kind of your probation officer are there things you're not allowed to do with money cash oh yeah um so like they do a financial investigation every six months um like i have to pay 10% of anything I make to restitution. Um, so what, explain that. Like how does that money supposedly go to the businesses that you, no, I don't think so. Broke the I'm, bills I'm pretty sure. Sh- and that's what I was kind of, uh, I'm pretty sure the federal government just pockets it because technically you're stealing from the federal government. Right. right. So it's like, but they took that counterfeit money from the businesses. They don't get it back. No. So it's really not restitution. It's, I guess it's restitution to the federal government, but they're making money. It's a tax. It's robbery. (laughs) Well, it is no comment on that, but you know, they want their money. They want their money. Feds off, (laughs) hide my money. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I I don't even think I can, can legally own my own business because they need to see pay stubs and stuff. So like, I'm pretty sure that was, I can't own a business. Well, until you're off. Yeah. Until until I'm off paper. paper. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like, I can't, uh, I can't spend money. That's why like people fly me out to interviews because like, if I were to ask permission to my PO to like go on a vacation, he'd be like, no, you can't do that. Cause, Cause I you owe us money. If right. you've got an extra 10 grand to go on vacation, like <sighs> we want 10% of it or whatever it may yeah. be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's like, he goes over my financials and like tries to basically like, mm-hmm call out irresponsible spending because like yeah. or whatever hey Pornhub's free dude you don't need this ten dollars a month <laughs> yeah you know? but uh yeah i mean they at this point you know i think I, I i'm they know i'm off drugs and not gonna resort back to crime or whatever yeah. so like it's mainly just a money mm-hmm. thing at this point of course i've got like nine months left so yeah great oh, great yeah. nine months to 
figure out how we could scale up this counterfeiting <laughs> business. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so great. Let's, uh, let's give a shout out to, uh, well, is your book finished? Not, no, not yet. Um, okay. So um, let's plug what we can plug now f- though, for the, for the people that are watching. Yeah. Basically I, uh, manage production at a print shop called graphical warehouse. Um, and I'm getting into sales in that too. So mm. if anybody wants stickers or prints or posters or mm-hmm. signs or anything like that. Um, also graphic, digital graphic design you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Like you're going to help me do my, yeah, I'm going to pay Jeff to do my banner for my U- new YouTube channel. Yeah. We, yeah. I can design it or yeah. whatever, send you proofs and yeah. if, you know, once it's approved, manufacture it or whatever. Awesome. Um, but yeah, like basically if, you know, for the people out there, like just hit me up on Instagram and yeah. if, if you're serious, we can, I'll give you phone numbers. And yeah. Stuff Sh- like what's that. the Instagram? But, um, J period Turner seven, two, seven. Okay, cool. We got to maybe work on that Instagram handle, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll put the link in the, the description. Um, and yeah, definitely looking forward to that book coming out. You know, I hope they can do something with, uh, with the movie. And yeah, I, I think uh, yeah. also you got a YouTube channel too. Yeah, that's Jeff uh, Jeffrey Patrick Turner. But yeah, I'm yeah. sure if you just uh, search Jeff Turner, most yeah. of my pops up. So. I think definitely like like leaning into this, you know, content making because uh, you got a fascinating like your it's your story is you as unique as the crime that you did. So um, definitely looking forward to it. Uh, and and happy that you're you're back doing really well, man. You look great. Uh, you seem centered, grounded. Kids are happy. Yeah, they're great. Wife's okay. Uh, we're separated, but she's uh, all right. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Well, marriage is hard, yeah. but, um, thank you so much for coming out here. Uh, we're going to switch over to the Patreon now, do some bonus content. Uh, but yeah, that was a really, that was an easy one. Easy one today. Thank you, uh, buddy. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate man. you, Jeff. All right, you guys take care. <laughs>